You see that tarp back there in the back? That's a super lightweight steel tarp. My good friends at My T Products sent me that tarp, and I just haven't put it in my truck yet. But if you want to save money on flatbed equipment, click the link in the bio and go over to mytproducts.com and take a look around. <clears throat> but that ain't the point of this video. I had two people hit me up today. Two people hit me up. They're about to, they're about to start leasing trucks. So, you know, about to start leasing trucks. Whenever you switch over to lease, you're going to be getting paid on the 1099. Leasing, true owner op, you got your own truck. Or if you're a 1099 employee, you're going to be getting paid on the 1099. So what that means is when you're a 1099, you're responsible for your own taxes. The employer is no longer helping out with those taxes like when you're on a W-2. W-2, you know, the company's taking your taxes out. They're paying them for you. So 1099, lease operators. 1099 lease operators. What do you need to do? What do you need to do? Of course, you need to start an LLC. You want to get paid to the LLC? You don't want to get paid to yourself using your social security number. You want to get paid to the LLC using the EIN number. Reason being, the LLC is only paying state and federal taxes. That's all they're paying. You know, you you as a person, you know, you're paying federal, you're paying state, you're paying all the, what they call that thing, the uh, self-employment taxes, uh, uh, Social Security, uh, Medicaid, unemployment, you know, you're paying for all that extra stuff. So how you save on your taxes, you file as an LLC, you are the employee of the LLC. So you you get paid to the LLC, but you're the employee, so you pay yourself from the LLC. So basically, you take half of your income, and I'm not even going to say half, because you can. the best way to do it, you can keep 80% of your income in the LLC, and you can pay yourself 20% of that. Now, hey, now I don't know how some of y'all might do that. Some of y'all might want to say, oh, I'm going to split it down the middle 50-50. But yo, no, it doesn't matter, man. The best way to do it, your LLC could make 200 grand. LLC could make 200 grand. You yourself as a person, you can make 40 grand on paper. On paper, you made 40 grand. LLC made 200 grand. And some people may say, oh, you're never going to be able to qualify to buy anything making 40 grand a year. How come you won't? It's still your money. It's still your money. Because first of all, let me tell you this. As soon as you switch over to LLC, and you get and you you decide you want to go buy a house or something, they're gonna want two years of of uh two or three years of our income tax statements. So you can't have one year W-2, one year 1099. It has to be consecutive or whatever it is. So basically what I'm saying is you're gonna to have to wait anyway. You're gonna to have to wait. You're gonna to have to have two years consecutive of, of whatever you own, W-2, 1099. So hey, you know this this kind of stuff. It's not going to happen overnight. It ain't going to happen overnight. You're going to have to put some work in to get it. So if you got to go two years getting paid on a 1099, that's what you got to do. You got to wait those two years. Hey, I was in the same same predicament when I switched over. I was trying to buy a house, and I everybody I called, even fucking Rocket Mortgage, I called everybody, and they all told me, two years consecutive 1099. Not one year W-2, then one year 1099 has to be two. So nothing's going to happen overnight. You got to be patient. You got to be patient. But in order for y'all to do this, in order for y'all to save money on your taxes, you got to get paid to that LLC. Now, I know you're going to ask, how do I start the LLC? I'm going to tell you how I started mine. Inkfile.com. That's how I started mine. Inkfile.com. You can use LegalZoom. You can use whatever. I don't know what else is out there because I use Inkfile. But I got a buddy to use LegalZoom. So inkfile.com, you start the LLC. It's only three documents that you need. Only three documents that you need. Three. I, I just had a buddy yesterday that just asked me what package should he uh should he get. I think he said gold, silver, bronze. He asked me, he asked me which package should he get off of inkfile.com. Now look, you only need three documents. I know how these websites are. They're gonna try to upsell you stuff. They're gonna try to sell you um some special leather binder to keep paperwork in they're going to try to uh get you to purchase a uh, a registered agent 
uh, a registered agent is basically like a person that could that could handle your handle your documents for you when you're not around. But you don't need to purchase a registered agent. You could be your own registered agent. A virtual mailbox. They want you to purchase a virtual mailbox. So, so you can't. I don't know. Virtual mailbox might work for some people, but for me, I don't need a virtual mailbox. I use an actual mailbox at a physical address. So that's fine. You don't need that. Three documents, articles of incorporation, statement of the organizer. That's the two that you need to even start the LLC. Well, like everybody's situation is going to be different because the filing fee is going to be different for each state. So I live in North Carolina. Now, South Carolina might be a different different filing fee. I don't know. I don't even know what North Carolina's filing fee is because I've done this years ago. But I'm just saying, for example, if mine's $100 and Texas, it might be $50. It's different for every state. So that just keep that in mind. So articles of incorporation, statement of the organizer. You're going to need that to start the LLC. You need, you need a third document. A third document after you get those two after you get those two that third document is called an operating agreement the operating agreement is basically a document that says you're in control of this llc that's what you're going to need to go to a bank and open up a business bank account you're going to need the operating agreement so you're going to need all this stuff operating agreement statement of the organizer notice i didn't say ein number yet i didn't say ein yet do not purchase an EIN number. Do not purchase an EIN number. You can get an EIN number for free. They're going to try to sell you one on these websites. You're going to get it for free. But I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what to do. You have to wait before your LLC is approved. You have to wait. It might take like two or three weeks for it to get approved. The state has to approve it to make sure no one else has the same name. So you have to get it approved by the state before you pick your EIN. Reason being, your EIN has to match up directly with the LLC name. I'm going to tell you a mistake I made. When I first started mine, my LLC, Nice Visions Motor Group, LLC. Nice Visions Motor Group, LLC. Notice LLC is on the end. When I went to the bank, my EIN number that I got for free, off the IRS website because I waited before my name to got approved before I went to the IRS website to get the EIN. My EIN number, it just said Nice Visions Motor Group. I didn't have the LLC on the end, so the bank wouldn't accept it. The names had to match exactly, so make sure you spell it correctly. So, but EIN number so easy. So while I was sitting inside the bank inside this lady's office that was opening my account. I went on the IRS website, it's irs.gov, not irs.com, irs.gov. I went up there, I created another, another EIN number. It takes like five minutes, it's that easy. You don't have to pay anybody for it. Now once you get your LLC started, once you get your EIN number, once you open up your business bank account, I'm gonna tell you this, it's best to open a business bank account at the same bank as your personal bank account. Reason being, you'll be able to transfer money a whole lot easier. You don't have to take cash out of one bank and take it to another bank to pay yourself. No, you can just go on a smartphone or a mobile app and you transfer the money on the app. That way, you have a documentation. If you pay yourself $500 a week, if you pay yourself $1,000 a week, you have documentation of where this money is going. You have documentation. You can't prove where cash went. But if you have documentation on this app, it's going to show in your bank statement that you transferred the money to this account. That's the best way to do it. So business account, personal account, open it at the same bank. The same bank. Keep that in mind. As far as taxes, as far as the tax situation, you want to take out 30% of what, whatever you bring home. You want to take out 30% of it. If you bring home... Let's let's make it easy so I can do it off the top of my head. Let's say you bring home a thousand dollars. Take thirty percent off. That's three hundred. You put it in another account that you don't touch. So you left with seven hundred. Three hundred went to taxes. Now, now keep this in mind. You got to have you a good accountant. Now once you've been doing this for a little while, you get a feel of how much you got to pay in for taxes. I pay my taxes every quarter. 
my accountant she does like a prediction but they couldn't get this they couldn't get this pre prediction down pat until after i've been after i went a whole year after i went a whole year paying taxes they couldn't get the prediction so the following year they had like a, a prediction of what i would have to pay in so once you get to that point that 30 percent that you take out each week once you get to a certain point i'm not gonna tell you you don't have to i'm not gonna tell you but once you get to a certain point you can start cheating a little bit you can start cheating a little bit you get a five thousand dollar check and you might want to keep the five thousand to yourself you don't want to take the 30 percent out but you know little by little you'll get a feel for about how much you owe in each quarter that's how i do it i don't know how everybody else does it but that's how i do it sometimes i keep my whole check sometimes i don't move the money but long as as long as the time comes when it's time for me to pay my taxes i have that money in the in the, in the bank that i can easily pay my taxes so let me let me i'm gonna say everything all over again llc articles of incorporation statement of the organizer operating agreement get it approved before you get the ein number once you get all that you take all these documents to the bank open the business bank account whenever you go lease your truck you're not going to lease it to your person i don't lease my truck to Dion melvin to myself my truck is leased to nice visions motor group llc that's who my truck is leased to that's that's the name that shows up on my settlements nice visions motor group llc when i get paid to the business guess what i do i pay myself but i don't pay myself every week i pay myself when i first started i used to pay myself a thousand dollars a week when i first started now i pay myself maybe 500 sometimes i don't pay myself at all I leave all the money in the business. I mean, it's still my money. It's my business. But for tax reasons, I don't always pay myself. So keep that in mind. You just got to get a feel for this stuff, man. People can talk about it all day. But until you actually get out and do it, you're not going to understand how it operates. So just keep that in mind. Hey, if anybody comments on this video, it's probably a lot of things that I missed out on. But if y'all comment, whatever it is, I'm going to, I'm most definitely probably going to give it a video response.